Southeast Georgia and the Low Country. This is WJCL 22 Morning News. See us now. It is six o'clock on your Monday morning. I'm Ashley Garrett. And I'm Emma Hamilton. And of course, we're going to get a check of that certified most accurate forecast to kick off your work week with our meteorologist, Melissa Hall. Melissa, I know uh, the tropics are continuing to keep you busy as they did all weekend. So what's going on out there with them right now? Well, we've got three areas that we're watching, but it's Omri that is up in New England and really not moving, actually. He has slowed down to one mile an hour, just parked it there over New York. You can see bringing a lot of rain to the western part of him there for New Jersey into Pennsylvania as well. And he's got those winds at 30 miles an hour still. So heavy downpours, strong winds, wreaking havoc for folks not only through today, but expecting him to stick around through tomorrow before he finally gets out of here. Now, swells are still well off our coast. Things right along our shoreline, fairly calm as you can see outside, but very cloudy to start the day. If you got a tea time, well, make sure you got a water bottle and our WJCL 22 News app. By noon, we feel near 100. And this afternoon, scattered showers back in the forecast. Now, highs actually pretty much spot on for this time of year. And that is the story. We're going to stick to those 90 degree temperatures, but it's going to be hot. It's going to feel like it's near 100 pretty much for the foreseeable future. Those scattered storms, they're not going anywhere and that active forecast all week long. You could have to dodge a shower at any time. Now your best chance of seeing them will be in the afternoons, but this morning you could walk out and find your car wet because overnight showers, they're going to be possible too. We're going to take a look at future cast and track it all out. Plus talk about all the activity in the tropics here in a few minutes. Melissa, thank you so much. Well, some Jasper County High School students will be learning online. Students who attend Ridgeland Hardyville will make the switch this week after an increase in positive COVID-19 cases. Now, according to school leaders, Ridgeland Hardyville has the most positive cases district wide. Right now, there's 24 infections and more than 90 kids and staff are in quarantine. On Friday, the school's football game was canceled after confirmed cases on the team. District leaders say they're not taking any chances. An alarming uh, uptick in COVID infections in the school district in just a few days since the school opened. Our problem is that, one, we have already encountered more cases than we saw in the entire school year of 2021. Now the school will be shut down until at least Friday. That's August 27th. District leaders will meet at the end of the week to look at the numbers and decide what comes next. And it's not just Jasper County feeling the COVID-19 impact. In Wayne County, hybrid learning starts today. Then in Long County, students and teachers are fully virtual. And in Screven, McIntosh, and Ware County school systems, all those school districts are taking a brief pause until after Labor Day. That's September. Well, sticking to schools this morning in Effingham County, masks will now be mandatory. Students are highly encouraged to wear masks. They're not mandated, they're not required, um, but it is an attempt um, to lessen the mask spread. We know that um, it's not going to prevent COVID, um, but we just need parents' help in recommending that. Now, this only applies to all staff members, both indoors and on buses. Visitors will also be required to mask up. Effingham County That's joined several other local school districts, making its face coverings mandatory. And today we're expecting to get a new COVID case count in Georgia. On Friday, nearly 10,000 people tested positive for the virus. In South Carolina, it's a similar story there. You can see more than 4,000 people tested positive for COVID on Wednesday. Those are the latest numbers we have from the state. A big decision about the future of COVID-19 is just hours away. The FDA could give Pfizer full approval for its COVID vaccine. Ashley is joining us from the newsroom to tell us what this could mean. Ashley, certainly some big news this morning. It could be big news, Emma. If approved today, Pfizer will become the first COVID-19 vaccine to get full FDA approval. Well, right now, the vaccine is only authorized for emergency use. The country's daily COVID case average is in the triple digits. In Georgia, we rank seventh in the nation for COVID-19 cases and 12th when it comes to COVID-19 related deaths. The U.S. Surgeon General hopes this news would mean more people would roll up their sleeve and get vaccinated. If and when this does come from the FDA, the full approval, two potential things may happen. One is you may see more people coming forward, those who perhaps were on the fence about getting vaccinated and this may uh, tip them toward doing so. General also says they believe this approval would mean more businesses would put a vaccine mandate in place to help prevent the spread 
of the Delta variant. Now, keep in mind, booster shots are being given out right now to those with weakened immune systems, and everyone will be able to get an additional dose starting September 20th. Now, it's unclear at this time the exact time that FDA leaders will meet to discuss the possible approval for the Pfizer vaccine. But, of course, once we learn that information, we'll update you on here and also on our website. That's WJCL.com. Emma. Big news we'll be following, Ashley. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, even though we talk about vaccine hesitancy, more than a million shots were given out on Saturday. According to the White House, that was the third day in a row more than a million doses were administered. Right now, 6% of eligible Americans are fully vaccinated. And here's a close look at where Georgia stands this morning and getting everyone protected against COVID-19. 42% of people are now fully vaccinated. According to Savannah Mayor Van Johnson, that puts the Peach State 48th in vaccination rates. Meanwhile, in South Carolina, 46% of people are now fully vaccinated. A Savannah restaurant will be closed until further notice because of COVID. The Shell House restaurant posted on Facebook, it's shutting its doors. There was a possible exposure among its staff. That plan is, the plan is to reopen on September 2nd. Savannah Mayor Van Johnson says he does not like that Georgia Governor Brian Kemp is giving power to businesses on whether to follow local COVID-19 rules. He says he believes the governor is overstepping his power. He's taken a public health issue and made it political. This is not political. We don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, Independent, Green Party, Libertarian, just wear a mask. His own health department says to wear a mask. Governor Kemp's executive order says local governments cannot force businesses to enforce city mask mandates or other rules. In Savannah, a mask mandate was reinstated. And some good news to pass along about Reverend Jesse Jackson and his wife and an update on Sunday night. We're told the two are responding well to their COVID-19 treatments. The couple was hospitalized Saturday in Chicago after becoming infected. Both are fully vaccinated. And in a statement from the family, they want to thank everyone for their prayers and well wishes during this time. Texas Governor Greg the Abbott says he has now tested negative for COVID-19. Less than a week ago, he announced his breakthrough infection. Governor Abbott says his symptoms were mild thanks to the fact that he was fully vaccinated. WJCL is your station for the latest data and information about the coronavirus for updates on everything from the COVID-19 booster shot to where you can get a vaccine in your community. You can head over to our website, that's WJCL.com, and make sure to download the WJCL 22 News app. A Wayne County detention officer is in jail this morning, accused of supplying contraband to inmates. But it's the video, Emma, of that arrest that's got people talking this morning. You come to our jail and do this, this is what it's going to get you. You're a disgrace to this uniform, and you need to go to jail for good. Well, this video, which has since been deleted, was posted to Facebook by the Wayne County Sheriff's Office, and it shows Dayton Beasley having his work shirt cut off his back. The sheriff's office releasing this statement, which reads in part, it actually happened a short time after the video was taken down, but it says in part, Sheriff Mosley in no way knew that the video was being posted. It was a decision made on other levels. For the ones that supported the post, thank you for your support. And for the ones that opposed, I apologize. Beasley faces multiple charges, including violation of oath of office and trading with inmates without consent. The Beaufort Police Department is still trying to figure out how this car ended up in a marsh. One person had to be rescued early yesterday morning. This is a picture from the scene. First responders had to break the glass on the back door to get that driver out safely. The person was taken to the hospital. Also in South Carolina and Hardyville, one person was hurt after their car crashed into a gas pump. The Hardyville Fire Department shared these photos on Facebook of the aftermath. It happened at the Marathon Station on White Hardy and Main Streets on Saturday. The cause of that crash is still under investigation.